Well, let's get more on this now. Uh, Philip Ingram is with me, a former senior military intelligence and security officer. Um, so, Philip, this is interesting. Changes at the very top of the military command involved in this war in Ukraine. Who are now the key players? What does this change mean? It is. Well, we have to remember this is day 323 of Vladimir Putin's 10-day special military operation, and he's at the top of the tree. Mm -hmm. you know, he is the overall in overall command, but it seems that he's increasingly distrusting his military commanders because he's reaching down with what we call the long screwdriver right into the tactical battles and ordering some things around and making tactical decisions. His right-hand man politically is his Minister of Defence, um, General Shrugu, 67 years old. He's been Minister of Defence since 2012. He was part of the planning for the annexation of Crimea in 2014 and part of the planning for this special military operation. Um, let's talk about this reshuffle. Who are the military commanders in that? Well, as you, as you touched in there, you know, General Gerasimov, who is the uh, chief of the general staff of the Russian Armed Forces, has just been given the additional title um, of the commander of the joint group of troops. So he's overall responsible for um, everything that's going on inside Ukraine. It's not clear whether he's giving up his other post or this is an additional post. 67 years old, he's a Putin ally. Um, he's been in major decision-making roles militarily since the Chechen Wars of um, 1999, so obviously involved in planning this special military operation and Crimea in 2014. Um, he's pushed aside um, General Suvorykin, the youngest of all of the generals that are in there. He's only 56. He's an Air Force general, um, nicknamed General Armageddon because of what he did inside Syria. Um, but he's now one of three deputies that um, exist um, uh, to Gerasimov. Um, but he's, he was appointed in October. Um, since then, he oversaw the withdrawal of Russian troops from Herson, the disastrous um, uh, attack on, from a Russian perspective, a fantastic attack from a Ukrainian perspective, um, on New Year's Day at Mikhaev, where a large number of Russian troops were, were killed. Um, and he's been the master of the suicide drone attacks onto critical national infrastructure in Ukraine. As you said, uh, Sorovakin has only been in the position for three months. He's now been moved aside, if you like. Is this common? Should, should we read much into it, this reshuffle? Um, there's a lot of angst going on inside the command and control structure. Putin has lost control and he's being influenced by this final character that there is in here, um, who is uh, Prozhogin. And Prozhogin is the head of the Wagner Group, this private military mm. company that comes in. He's got political ambitions, or we're starting to get indications he has to potentially be Putin's successor, but he's got a direct line into, into Putin. And um, he has openly criticised Shogu and Gerasimov for what they've been doing. And he, you know, when people openly criticise what they've been doing militarily, they tend to um, fall out of a window from the ninth floor or fall down the stairs. He hasn't, which shows that he's got you know, that, that protection from Putin. Um, interestingly, he has praised Suvorykin. So this dynamic and this relationship, whenever, from a military perspective, he's doing all the stuff in Bakhmut at the moment, or his troops are, um, he should be under Gerasimov. He's not. Um, and where he's fitting in and the way he's stirring the pot is, I think, causing people real angst. OK, Philip, thank you. Running us through some of the key players there uh, in the uh, Russian regime uh, involved in this war in Ukraine. Thank you, Philip Ingram. We'll speak to you later.